Welcome to Christ Church. The following is a homily from our Sunday morning gathering in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Enjoy. I get a little excited when I talk about New Hope as my staff so kindly likes to remind me. <laughs> uh, I want to begin by thanking Christ Church. In writing this, I decided it was easier to list the people not supporting us from this church, as the list is much more manageable. And I'm looking at you, Don. I'm, just, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, seriously, from Brains and Brats. Oh my goodness, Brains and Brats, you guys. Thank you so much. That was, give, give yourselves a big round of applause for that. Incredible, incredible. Um, I think we raised around $13,000, so that's incredible. Uh, from our holiday supports, this church really wraps their arms around our youth during the holiday season to adopt those that, that need some Christmas gifts um, and Thanksgiving meals. Uh, luncheon hosts, that's coming right around the corner, so mark your calendars for June 15th if you'd like to be a luncheon host and you haven't signed up already. And then our camp support. So summer camps are coming right up around the corner, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, I think you all know this about your people here at Christ Church, but they are rare and precious and have the biggest hearts around. Truly thank you for being New Hope's extended family. This is not my first opportunity to speak to you as a congregation, but I know this could be the first time some of you have heard from New Hope staff or board members. So I'd like to take a few minutes to orient you to who I am and the mission of New Hope. For those of you who may not know or recognize me yet, I am the executive director of New Hope, coming on board in the fall of 2020. In a previous life, I spent um, the 10 years before New Hope at the University of Tulsa teaching public service um, and leading community and K-12 partnerships through a university initiative called True Blue Neighbors. And prior to that, I worked in grassroots nonprofits and youth development and even served as a bilingual preschool teacher at St. Francis Xavier Catholic Church in the Kendall Whittier neighborhood. My little family of five formally joined the Episcopal community in the fall of 2019. Ah, 2019, when we all didn't know a little word called COVID. <laughs> Our family has absolutely fallen in love with the inclusiveness and kindness of the Episcopal Church which Christ Church exemplifies. And we are so grateful to have this amazing community to grow and practice our faith, um, to build friendships, and to raise our children. Without telling too much of our children's story, I do think it's important for you to know that our kids themselves are New Hope kids. In our house, we try to live by the rule of nothing about us without us. Uh, but our family agrees that it's helpful for you to understand that justice-involved families definitely exist here at Christ Church and everywhere in Oklahoma. As members of this church, you should feel proud of the forward-thinking and compassionate efforts made by this diocese beginning more than 30 years ago to help mitigate the challenges faced by children of the justice-involved. The remarkable Deacon Judy Gann led the way founding and was the founding executive director of the organization. Without her, there is no new hope. Talk about big shoes to fill. <laughs> Initially rooted as an outreach mission in 1992 by members within the diocese, this year New Hope is celebrating 32 years of service to justice-involved families with a bold mission to end generational incarceration in Oklahoma. Over the last three and a half decades, the imprisonment of adults in the United States has quadrupled. As many of you are aware, the United States incarceration rate of adults is higher than anywhere else in the world. On the other side of that terrible statistic, an even darker side that most don't consider, are nearly three million innocent children who lose a parent to the justice system. While there is no formal database for children of the incarcerated in Oklahoma, our best estimates are that on any given day, more than 26,000 children in our state under the age of 18 are grieving the loss of a parent to the criminal justice system. So I always like to compare that to 
the size of a major metropolitan school district in, in Oklahoma. So Tulsa Public Schools has about 30,000 kids enrolled. So an entire major metropolitan school district of populations worth of kids are impacted every single day. Children are often thought of as collateral consequences to their parents' incarceration, but they are not fines, fees, jobs, or housing. They are their own people who are early in their own lives. They also deserve resources and opportunities to succeed. Children can't be an afterthought, and we as a society need to start rethinking the way we provide resources, support, and opportunities to this population. The racial and ethnic disparities within our criminal justice system are finally more well known. I'm gonna hit you with a bunch of data, buckle up. Uh, for Native American and African American communities, the impact of incarceration is extraordinarily broad. 63% of Native American and African American adults, almost two out of every three people, have had an immediate family member spend at least one night in jail or prison. African American adults are nearly five times as likely as white adults to experience incarceration and on average receive much longer sentences. Native Americans are incarcerated at rates 38% higher than the national average. African Americans are seven times more likely to have incarcerated parents than, than our white children, and Latinx children are twice as likely. According to the Annie E. Casey Foundation, the data for Native children of incarcerated parents is not known nationally, but in Oklahoma, data shows that Native children are twice as likely as white children to have an incarcerated parent. The core trends are abundantly clear. While the outcomes of incarceration have been devastating for everyone imprisoned, communities of color have been particularly hard hit. With studies that are available to us, we can observe that nationally, children with a justice-involved parent or parents are more likely to have significant life challenges compared to their peers without familial justice involvement. Outcomes in health, academic achievement, social emotional well-being and financial stability are all dramatically lower for justice involved families. Currently, Oklahoma's incarceration rate of women is the second highest in the world, second only to Idaho. Very often this number fluctuates, but Oklahoma is consistently in the top five, frequently number one in the world. Data tells us that nearly 60% of women incarcerated in Oklahoma are also mothers. As most of us in this room today are Oklahomans, if we're all honest, most of us do not have to look much further than our own family tree to personally know or to love someone who has been or is now justice involved. It may surprise you that in Oklahoma, whether or not someone is a parent or a primary caregiver for children is not taken into account during sentencing. When a mother is sent to prison, they often have been the only adult caregiver in the household. This can lead to significant disruption in the lives of their children. It may also surprise you that less than 10% of Oklahoma children ever end up in the uh, child welfare system, less than 10%. So where do the other 90% of children land? When we look at New Hope's client demographics, we see that they often abruptly land in the hands of grandparents, aunts, uncles, friends, and even neighbors, who often are not equipped or fully prepared to take on this role and get little to no financial or other supports from our state. So New Hope shines as a beacon of light for justice-involved families in Oklahoma. And so while I share with you about the research around the commonly associated negative outcomes for youth, I would like to pivot to sharing with you what positive outcomes can be seen for the same youth with New Hope services and interventions. Data tells us that youth with a justice for all parent greatly benefit from having a consistent and loving support system, from activities and groups that develop a sense of belonging, from the positive reinforcement of identity and community, from social and emotional support such as life skills development, case management services, and connections to broader community resources as needs arise. 
In the past years since the pandemic, New Hope has served nearly 600 clients and caregivers. We use a social emotional skills development curriculum with a unique lens for children of the incarcerated developed by three homegrown behavioral health um, professionals, um, one being a PhD from the University of Oklahoma. We currently have seven biweekly peer support groups led by highly skilled and credentialed leaders that meet across Tulsa and Oklahoma City we are continuing to grow those site-based services. We have vibrant summer camps that serve youth from across the state, case management services, holiday and family supports, um, and family nights, like our skate night last week um, that had about 65 clients in attendance. So let's talk about success. Success for New Hope clients can look like completing middle school. Yes, completing middle school. The average educational attainment for men who are incarcerated in Oklahoma is the sixth grade. And for women who are incarcerated, it's the eighth grade. Graduating from high school, not becoming justice involved themselves, obtaining consistent employment and housing on their own, um, completing a technical certificate or post-secondary education, and in the case of one of our former clients, um, being accepted into the number one law school in the nation with a full scholarship. We realize that ending generational incarceration in Oklahoma truly is a one child at a time approach that cannot be solved by these mitigation programs and services alone. Um, this year has been crucial for us, so exciting. So we were, we're on the forefront now, Oklahoma is, of Oklahoma, uh, New Hope Oklahoma is, um, at the forefront of Oklahoma's most important and significant effort to support children of the incarcerated ever. This January, New Hope was awarded its first federal grant in partnership with the Oklahoma Department of Corrections, um, Girl Scouts Beyond Bars, and Oklahoma Messages, with the goal to pilot wraparound services for children of prisoners at Mabel Bassett and Dick Connor Correctional Facilities. Through the funding from this grant, we have hired a master's level social worker and have already begun work inside these two prisons to expedite referrals to our services for their children and develop a pipeline and a database for service recipients and referrals. Um, we are gearing up for a truly fantastic summer camp season. This year, we'll again host day camps at Trinity for our younger, younger clients um, in late June, and then we'll be at St. Crispin's, which we all love, at the end of July for our residential sleepaway camps. We cannot do this important work without your support. Um, on June 15th, we will host a luncheon, fundraiser at Trinity. Many of you are already table hosts, and I recognize you and appreciate you, and thank you for being the, those hosts year after year. But if you'd like more information about how to be a part of that, um, I'll be in the, in the hall afterwards, and I'd love to chat with you. Um, and then Christchurch parishioners have always been our biggest cheerleaders and our greatest supporters. And for that, we are incredibly grateful. Um, and so with that, I'll take my leave and let the service go on. But we want to thank you and let you know that you do make a difference for our clients and for Oklahoma. So thank you so much. <laughs>